Do we pray with expectant faith and confident hope in God's merciful care for us? A blessed Saturday, brothers and sisters. This is our reflection question for today. Holy Spirit, make my heart open to the Word of God. Make my heart open to goodness. Make my heart open to the beauty of God. St. Rose Philippine Boucher was born in Grenoble, France in 1769. After preparing for her first communion at the visitation convent nearby, her desire to give her life to God led her to join the visitation community, a cloistered contemplative order, despite her longing to serve God in missionary life. In the aftermath of the French Revolution, her convent was closed by the government. Ten years, Philippine served the destitute of Grenoble as she searched for God's desires for her. In 1804, Madeleine Sophie Barat was told about Philippine Boucher, a woman of uncommon gifts and grace. The first meeting led to an immediate soul friendship. Philippine joined the Society of the Sacred Heart, and her desire to bring God to distant lands was realized in 1818 when she and four companions sailed to the New World. Here she longed to work among the Native Americans, but it would be 23 years before she went to live among the Potawatomi. Before realizing her heart's desire, Philippine established the first Catholic schools west of the Mississippi and oversaw the growth of the Society of the Sacred Heart in the United States. Frontier life exacted an enormous toll, both physical and psychological. Philippine never believed she had the gift of leadership and died in 1852, thinking herself failure. History reveals other. Native Americans saw in her a woman who prays always. The schools she founded became part of a network of Sacred Heart schools around the world and the Society of the Sacred Heart remains an international community bound together across six continents as much by relationships as by a common spirituality and mission. She was canonized by St. Pope John Paul II on July 3, 1908. Jesus tells a story that is all too true. A defenseless widow is taken advantage of and refused her rights. Through sheer persistence, she wears down the judge until he gives her justice. Persistence pays off, and that's especially true for those who trust in God. Jesus illustrates how God as our judge and vindicator is much quicker to come to our defense and to bring us His justice, blessing, and help when we need it. But we can easily lose heart and forget to ask our Heavenly Father for His grace. And Jesus told the parable of the persistent widow and the unjust judge to give his disciples fresh hope and confidence in God's unfailing care and favor towards us. In this present life, 
we can expect trials and adversity, but we are not without hope in God. The day of the Lord's judgment will reveal that God's justice triumphs over all the injustices perpetrated by a fallen world of sinful people and that God's love is stronger than death. Those who put their faith in God and entrust their lives to Him can look forward with hope and confident assurance. They will receive their reward, if not fully in this present life, then surely and completely in the age to come, in God's kingdom of righteousness, peace, and joy. Jesus ends His parable with a probing question for us. Will we have the faith, the kind of faith that doesn't give up or lose hope in God, but perseveres to the end of our lives and to the end of this present age, when the Lord Jesus will return in glory as ruler and judge of all? Faith is an entirely free gift that God makes to us. We could not believe trust and persevere with hope if God did not first draw us to Himself and reveal to us His merciful love and care. If we want to grow and persevere in faith until the end of our days, then we must nourish our faith with the Word of God and ask the Lord to increase it. When trials and setbacks disappoint us, Where do we place our hope and confidence? Do we pray with expectant faith and confident hope in God's merciful care for us? Let us pray in the name of the Father, of the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Jesus, increase our faith and make it strong that we may never doubt your word and promise to be with us always. In every situation we face, whether trials, setbacks, or loss, may we always find strength in your unfailing love and find joy and contentment in having you alone as the treasure of our lives. Jesus, King of mercy, we trust in you. Amen. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. God bless your families, brothers, and sisters. God bless our Catholic Church and couples for Christ.